so now it's time to um, do the real thing and to um, tackle the contribution that you decided to make. To do that, we will um, do a presentation of the contribution. So every student will get to have a presentation, uh, 11 slides, uh, explaining how they will go about the contribution. So this is a bit vague, uh, but it, it's uh, I'm going to give an example with these slides uh, based on uh, an actual bug I worked on. So uh, I will pretend that uh, I didn't do it, and I will explain how I will uh, do that. The slides actually refer to slides that we saw yesterday uh, during the um, contribution process presentation. So you can relate to them, and it's basically chronologically uh, ordered uh, in the same way. For the mentoring sessions, these slides will be uploaded to your RedMind project, so the mentor knows what are your intentions. And also during the retrospective, you will be able to go back to your presentation and see how different things went compared to what you planned. So I will give you this presentation now, starting with what will you contribute. I started to write buffer list unit tests. So in, in Ceph, which is the project I chose, buffer lists uh, are used but not tested. So it's a fairly self-contained piece of code, and I decided to write unit tests for them. While doing so, I found a test that fails on a border case. It does not fail altogether, but there is a one case which I managed to reproduce, and it just throws an exception. So I made a bug report, and I'm going to try to resolve this one. In the context of my company, Ceph is going to be used as a block storage. So it's essential that we are able to fix bugs in Ceph, including at the very low level when something bad happens. And for that, because we're not the uh, people who wrote the code initially, we need a lot of unit tests. We, we need a lot of examples to show how it uh, works because uh, we can't rely on our memory uh, because we didn't write the code in the first place. And because buffer list is an essential building block of Ceph, it's important that we are absolutely sure that I can show the Q&A people uh, that uh, it's really solid. It has been tested thoroughly. The tools used to uh, work is uh, Git, which I will install on uh, Debian GNU Linux, which is my operating system of choice. And the Redmine used by the Ceph project is on trackerceph.com. And I will observe how tickets are updated, how was they have been updated in the past two weeks. And this will tell me uh, how I should uh, update mine. There are a lot of fields probably not used uh, in a very consistent way compared to the documentation. So I will not try to read the documentation of the modules uh, of Redmine, but rather observe the usage. And then I will go uh, on ircrftc.net-ceph, and because I have a uh, shaky, uh, because I move a lot, I have a shaky uh, internet connection, I will install ZNC, uh, a bouncer, to pretend that I'm connected all the time and I will use the Quasel uh, IRC client. My approach uh, is verbose. I tend to speak a lot, to write a lot, and from what I observed in the Ceph project, it won't be an issue uh, because some people uh, are actually like when things are explained. So I will explain what I do as much as possible. However, uh, I tend to be very focused on my work and uh, I do not socialize easily 
uh, on RRC channels or mailing lists. Uh, so I will force myself to uh, socialize in the sense that I will uh, take an interest of uh, about uh, what other people do or when there is some uh, unrelated uh, discussions on RRC that is unrelated to Ceph, I will try to participate. I'm used to online relationships, so I, I will be able to see how people react. That will not be an issue. However, uh, I'm not a native English speaker, so I will refrain from uh, using any items or making any jokes. In order to engage immediately, uh, I will declare the problem on tracker.sep.com. Does not seem a good idea to first go to the RRC channel and ask, uh, is this problem happening? Uh, because it's not the way people do that usually. Uh, what I observe on the RRC channel is there are users who discover Ceph for the first time and they ask high level questions such as I have troubles uh, installing Ceph. Uh, or developers tend to say, I have this pull request, I filled this ticket. So I will declare the problem by filling a ticket on tracker.set.com. I expect answers, maybe, from Tommy Virtanen or Sage Vale, because the Git log shows that they were the last to modify the code. However, it was a long time ago, so maybe they are not so interested. So maybe I will have an answer. In order to, met, to make the um, problem clear, I will include the unit test snippet in the ticket. So it, uh, I could add a link to the um, unit test, uh, but it may be easier if someone just uh, glimpse at the tracker. If the unit test is in the tracker, they will not have to click on a link. Uh, I suppose if someone is interested by the title of the ticket, they will at least uh, take a quick look at the description. If the description contains the unit test, might make things really obvious. Then I will grab the contribution, which uh, I learned how to do by going to the bug report, click update, click assignee, and select myself to be an assignee to the bug. So people know that I don't just um, declare the bug, but I intend to fix it. I've seen a few times that there is no strict rule in Ceph about owning a bug and uh, sometimes fixes may be done uh, without uh, strict compliance to oh, I must first own the bug if someone owns the bug I will not fix it etc uh, but in any case I will grab the contribution so it, it lowers the chances that someone else uh, fixes the bug uh, for me then I will play with my network uh, it so happens that there is the first Ceph meetup in Paris uh, that is announced. So I will go there and talk about the work I do for uh, as a Ceph developer and ask if there are other developers uh, in the room. Then back to the project. Uh, asking a question in this context is fairly difficult because when it comes to code in Ceph, uh, people don't talk much about the code. The code speaks for itself. So instead, I will propose a patch. So instead of saying uh, blah, blah, blah about this bug, should it be written differently? Uh, it seems a uh, contorted way, way to make the tests, uh, which I think. Uh, I will just propose a patch and send it as a pull request via GitHub. It's not the only uh, mean to um, submit a patch, but uh, it's one possible way. And I will ask for review. So my question will be actually asking someone on RRC to review my patch. And maybe not someone specifically, but asking, is there anyone uh, willing to review my patch? While waiting, uh, I will build Karma uh, by keeping working on the unit test for the other functions in the file. So the, uh, the core of the work I'm doing by writing unit tests on, uh, on buffer list is not strictly necessary to the project. 
uh, but I chose goodwill so I can just keep doing that instead of just stopping because I found one bug. So people will see because I report hours spent on the tracker, there is a field where you can say I spent that many hours working on that. Um, they will see that I keep working and I will post co uh, code coverage reports uh, that are that can be generated by make check coverage in the sources and they look nice because there are colors and the HTML page and uh, I feel good when I go from 70% to 75% it uh, tells me that I did not waste my day and then I will discuss uh, what I do with people who are interested which is very unlikely because it's a very uh, very narrow uh, area of Ceph but who knows and then I will prepare the bug port. Uh, since it's a bug, uh, it's really likely that it happens in previous versions of Ceph. However, uh, my hunch is that it's a function that is not uh, actually used. So it's a function that is part of buffer list, but I, I tried to grab it in other areas of the code and it does not seem to be used, which would explain why the bug was not fixed in the first place. But it's kind of a time bomb. Whenever someone decides that they need this function, uh, it might break in a really bad way. In any case, it has been uh, in the code for a very long time, so uh, it's likely that uh, backporting will be just cherry picking. And to figure out the way to submit the patch to a given branch, I will uh, have to ask on RC because I don't know exactly how to do that. I mean, technically speaking, I see, uh, but who is going to review what What are the rules? Uh, I, I don't really know. So that's what I will do uh, to contribute. And in the end, I hope that my contribution will be accepted, that will be merged in master. And that's what I have. So that's an example of what you are expected to produce. Uh, I sent you uh, via email uh, an ODT file that contains the same slides only with questions uh, instead of the Ceph example. And you will have um, 30 to 45 minutes uh, to prepare the slides. And then you will present them and we will comment on them.